Hi everyone, my name is Zach and welcome to Not A Tutorial. Well, today I downloaded Blender 2.8 the second time, but it was the first time I really opened it and tried it. Down here you can see quite nice cycles rendering, right? No, it's not cycles, it's real time. In Blender 2.8 there will be this very cool new real-time render engine called Eevee. And that's what I basically wanted to show you in this video. If you are following the Blender development, then you certainly saw this many EV demos and all this stuff looks so amazing that I thought I have to try it out. And that's what I did today. So yeah, in this video, I just wanna show you what I created here and my experience so far. First of all, Blender 2.8 is in heavy development. This is absolutely not a stable version here. Also while testing, it crashed a few times, but this is absolutely normal. If you wanna download and test Blender 2.8 for yourself, go to blender.org, click on download Blender, and down here you find this bleeding edge, click on this button here, and down here you can download the latest versions of Blender 2.8. But keep in mind, this is really early in development and it's not stable, so don't use this for important projects. Just download this for playing around like I did here. So first of all, the animation you saw at the beginning was rendered in the viewport with this OpenGL render button down here, but it was not rendered in real time. So the playback was pretty slow, like two frames per second. But I think that's because of my not so super fast computer. And also if you render with a high resolution and until lysing on, this will take a little longer. So first of all, if you wanna render your viewport, set up your camera then in the render settings, set up your dimensions. And what you also can do is switching over to Blender Render, change the anti aliasing so that you have smooth edges and then switch back to Eevee and then hit this button here for a still frame or this for the animation. Yeah, and certainly if you wanna render an animation, you should set the output folder and the file format. Yeah, now I could save this image down here, save as image, and then I have rendered this as a still frame. And as you can see with this anti-aliasing, it looks quite okay. All right, now let's take a look how this scene looks like in actual effect. Let's switch to clay and disable only render here. And this is what we have. This car I created for my artwork final takeoff for the HUM 3D Car Render Challenge 2016. It was quite fun. <laughs> and if you wanna have a look at the final rendering I created, just take a look in the video description. There you find a link to my ArtStation page. So what we have here, we have basically this car. This certainly was created for a high resolution rendering, but also I would use the poly count and bake some textures so that you can view it in real time. I uploaded this to Sketchfab, there you can also watch the model. And yeah, I just grabbed this model here and wanted to try it out in Eevee. So we have this car, basically two objects here and the fire is, the fire are just some planes here. Then I have some spot lamps here and on the same position I have some point lamps. Up here I have another point lamp and certainly the camera. And up here where the fire is, I have also a few point lamps, as you can see. So let's switch back to Eevee. And now is the question, how can we make this look so cool? 
So first of all, we have a lot of effects we can enable. So let's disable all that. And in the background, as you can see, I've imported an HDI image from hdihaven.com. And the cool thing is, similar to cycles, this HDI in the background is also lighting up our 3D models. Pretty realistic, which is awesome. Also, we have these nice reflections. The shading works quite similar to cycles. We have our notes up here with this metallic node, which is pretty easy to use. You just plug in some textures. Here I have a color map and a roughness map and a normal map. And then you can play around with the values here. I don't want to go into details here. Then if we want to enable these nice effects, we can switch to the render settings and enable this bloom setting. This basically adds this glow effect. You can also see here in the background where the sun is. And under post-processing, you also can change some settings from the bloom, like the intensity and other stuff. Then we have ambient occlusion. This basically adds this shadow in the corners and edges, as you can see. This makes the whole thing also much more realistic. Then we have depth of field, which only works in the camera. Then I select the camera. Here I can change the distance where the focus point should be. If you want to see this cross for the focus, just enable limits down here. And then we reduce the f-stop. For this, I switch into the camera perspective. Put this way, 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 way down. And then you can see we have this nice depth of field, which is pretty amazing. Take a look at this. So, and by the way, if you don't want to see all this helping objects, grid and all that stuff, press N and under display enable only render. Then you just see what will be rendered in the end. Pretty amazing with this depth of field. And also we have motion blur. This I don't test it right now. This certainly only works if you have moving objects. So that moving objects will be blurred out a bit so that it looks much more realistic. So and now let's take a look at the coolest feature, in my opinion, the volume. And this only works if you go up here in the node editor to the world settings, add a shader, volume scatter, this I already did, and plug it into the volume output and then turn down the density to 0.1 because otherwise this is too strong. Then in the render settings, enable volume metric and boom. <laughs> and then basically the stronger your lights are, the bigger this volume thing is, as you can see. Yeah, and if you basically combine this bloom effect with this lamps here, you got this shiny glowing areas, same for the fire up here. One thing with the fire, you can see I used alpha here. So let's select the fire here and go to the material settings. And in this metallic shader, you have this transparency value. Let's take a look at this up here, this one here. And if you want this to work, you have to switch the blend method down here to, for example, alpha blend. There are other ways to blend it. I don't test it everything here. So, but in this way you can enable transparency here. And here I used an alpha mask to mask out the black area. And then I just put some lamps in here. Yeah, and as you can see, pretty nice stuff. And what's also pretty cool is that you can use Filmic Blender for the real-time render engine. So you go to the scene settings, color management and view, you switch to filmic, what I already did. And then you can change the contrast here. You can also enable the curves here, what I also did and change the color of your image a bit if you like. 
make it darker or brighter. There are many things that you can do. Yeah, and if you're now asking yourself what the use of EV, because it's similar to game engines, you can view awesome graphics in real time, depending on your system. I think this can be used for many things. Certainly you can create your own 3D animated movies in real time with this um, real time graphics. This should definitely work. But I think it's more like a layout thing that you can see basically what the, your scene would look like rendered inside your viewport. You have real time reflections and all that stuff. Also, this is pretty nice for pre-visualization of your scenes and uh, if you want to create a 3D animated movie and so on. And yeah, I think you can do a lot of things with this. So yeah, I'm not an expert in real time stuff, but I find this pretty interesting and I'm pretty excited about this and I definitely want to see more and want to see where all this Blender 2.8 thing goes. And yeah, if you want to download this model here, go to Sketchfab. The link is in the video description. There you can download this, including the textures. Yeah, that's it with this random, not really structured video. I just wanted to share my excitement about Blender 2.8. Thanks to the developers that you put this so far so quickly. And I'm pretty excited and looking forward to all the features that will be included in Blender 2.8. And I hope you are excited too. Yeah, that's it with this video. I hope you liked it and learned a few things. If so, tell your friends about it and share this video. And yeah, we see us in the next one. Goodbye.